Welcome to another one of my video reviews. Uh, as usual, I've managed to find a handgun that there isn't a huge amount of information out there on. I won't say there aren't any videos or reviews or anything, but it's definitely a little bit limited, nothing particularly in-depth about this. So I thought I would go ahead and make a video to show you it all. Uh, it's got quite a few interesting little features. And... Um, as I usually say, this has fast become one of my favourite little pistols. As you can see, uh, this might shock you, it is a WE. I've never been a huge WE fan, but uh, this gun has definitely turned me around a little bit in terms of that. And it is the TT-33 Tokarev uh, gas blowback pistol. As you can see, unlike old WEs that come in a plain brown cardboard box, they've put a little bit, bit of effort into this. And um, it kind of looks like a, it's meant to look like a little case. Pretty cool, actually. I think it looks quite nice. I think if you had bought a load of WEs and you had like a stack of these, it would look quite good. Um, so yeah, quite a nice box, actually. Um, here's the sticker from where I bought it. Uh, Wolf Armouries. I haven't bought anything from them before, actually. It's the first thing I've ever bought from them, despite looking at their website quite a lot. A uh, very bad website. If, if someone from there is watching this, you do need to update that a bit. Anyway, £100 this cost, which for a gas blow-up pistol um, is on the cheaper side. For a WE, it's about normal. I should say, you can actually... Okay, there goes the box. Uh, what I should say is you can actually get this a lot cheaper than that. Um, as I said, it was £100 um, in the UK. That was the cheapest I could find it. Uh, however, from Asia... Uh, UN Company or UN Company, whatever you meant to say, have actually got this right now in stock for $66. I mean, that is an insane price for the gun you're getting here. Uh, that's that's £40. Obviously, you're going to have to add um, postage and potentially uh, import fees and things. But um, if you watch this video and you like the look of it and you don't mind waiting a few weeks, go over to UN Company and get one because these are excellent pistols and for $66 I can't think of any other gas blowback that could really match it for that price if you like the design that is it's obviously a little bit um, unique anyway back to the box inside you've got a manual uh, nothing too in-depth very basic all different languages uh, translated badly of course only thing of value in here really is the parts list which is in Chinese and your um, exploded view, which is always very helpful if, you, if you're going to take the gun apart. As you can see, there's quite a lot of parts in this. Uh, despite it being quite a simple gun externally, there's quite a lot going on. So yeah, that's fine. Unlike your normal cheap plastic base, this comes with... It's kind of the similar thing you get your eggs in. It's like an egg crate kind of material. Quite thick, recycled cardboard kind of thing. Um, it, strangely, it actually feels kind of higher quality than just getting a slab of plastic or something. It, um, it kind of suits the gun, I think. Looks pretty good in there. Not held particularly securely, but um, it's only contacting with cardboard, so it's not going to rub too much or anything. Anyway, good box. Um, I'm glad we have kind of uh, moved with the times and started making quite attractive boxes, because before they were very un understated, just literally brown cardboard box. So that's nice. Glad they do that now. So far, so good. It seems like much more like a high quality product than if you went and bought an old WE1911 or something where they just ripped off the TM box and copied it and yeah. Anyway, the gun itself. As you can see, for WE, it actually looks really, really good. Even compared with the other uh, Tokarevs out there which are more expensive like the SRC and the KWA and uh, actually KSC do make one which is essentially the KWA but plastic um, I would say this looks better than pretty much all of them uh, the KSC plastic one looks pretty good, it's heavyweight plastic but it doesn't beat the feel and look of actual nice metal I'm not a fan of cheap pot metal um, which this undoubtedly is but it's finished really nicely um, as you can see it reflects light nicely Despite the fact that it is cast, um, you wouldn't normally get this, but there's actually a grain to it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but um, 
it looks like it has just be it has been machined from a block of steel. So full marks uh, to WE for finish. Uh, there are no imperfections, obvious imperfections. Overall, really impressive for the price you pay for something like this. And uh, the silver version of this looks just as nice. Uh, yeah, it does come in silver and black versions. The silver is a little more expensive from most websites, but still from Asia. Uh, you can get one of these for around $80, $90. Uh, which, again, is a great price, and I'll get into why it's such good value. So, um, it's a Tokarev, as you can see. Um, it's a pretty faithful reproduction overall. Something you might be wondering about straight away is what this is, and it is indeed a little manual safety. Um, if you know much about Tokarevs and their clones, you'll probably notice that there isn't anything sold in the real world that has this kind of little safety on. Uh, the Norinco copies have got a thumb safety here. The, um, the uh, what are they called, Zestava um, Yugoslavian copies, I think they are have got sort of a big safety here. Um, however, I haven't been able to find anything real still that has this one. After doing a little bit of research, uh, I understood why this is actually on here. And um, that's because this isn't uh, a WE original gun. They didn't come up with the design. This is a clone, like a lot of WEs, of the Hudson Tokarev. Now, if we go back maybe five, six, seven years, um, there weren't any there aren't really any major manufacturers producing these. Uh, obviously, WE weren't. Um, KWA only released a few years ago. Um, SRC were probably the first, but again, that was still three, four years ago. But before that, your only option for a gas blowback Tokarev was the Hudson. Now, Hudson make uh, model guns and some airsoft guns. They really don't make a whole lot anymore, at least airsoft-wise. But they made a few high-quality replicas, weren't particularly good in terms of function. They made a gas blowback M3 grease gun, which is, I think, the only company that's ever made a blowback, uh, gas grease gun. Um, and they made a Tokarev, which, to comply with Japanese law, because they were a Japanese company... I'm um, sorry, no, I don't think it's Japanese law. I think it's to get that ASGK stamp on it. Um, something, some kind of legislation or rule. Um, it has to have a manual locking safety, and you'll find that most um, like TMs and other Japanese guns... Uh, ones that have the ASGK stamp on them somewhere will have a manual safety, whether it's down here on a serial tag or whatever. Um, so yeah, that is why this is on here. Um, I only bought this gun because I knew it was removable. If if that was fixed there, I think it would have bugged me a lot because that's right where your thumb is. And sure enough, the down position is safe. I think it is anyway. Let's check. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, you're skirmishing, you've got your thumb on the grip, as you would, and it's never going to shoot um, unless you keep your thumb hovering up in the air like that, which is very uncomfortable. So, um, might as well get this out of the way. First, it is very easily removable. I've only put it back on here for the sake of the review. Um, Tucker of grips are very easy to remove. Oh, and interestingly, inside the frame here, you've got a WE quality control sticker. Uh, it's nice to know they actually have some form of quality control now. Uh, it's a little bit reassuring, because I'm sure they didn't used to. Um, so yeah, you can find that in there. That's a nice little touch. Anyway, Tokarev grips aren't screwed on. They've got a little set of levers inside. So you just put your finger in, swipe it sideways. And your grip panel will come off. There's the little mechanism there, which has the safety attached. This makes it incredibly easy to simply remove. Um, it's simply held on by the stud here. Just pull it off and it's a single piece of bent steel into that little S shape. And it is as simple as that. Um, pull it off the grip and your safety is gone. So you can throw that away. Well, I'll keep it in the box, but you know, you don't need that anymore. It does leave a slight gap in the grip there. Looks like it's been chipped. But I think it's much better than having a safety. And by the way, the grips are uh, plastic with a metal lever. The other one can then be removed um, by moving this lever internally. So you can see, very simple. The grips don't hold anything on. It'll function perfectly without the grips if you want to do that for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Let me just put those back on and I'll get on with all the other features. 
Right, so as I said, grips are indeed plastic. Uh, the only external parts of the gun that are plastic are the grips, that is it. Everything else is metal, different types of metal, varying finishes and things. But yeah, everything is metal but the grips. Of course there are some other small plastic parts like the feed lips and the uh, blowback nozzle. But main, mainly you can definitely consider this a full metal gun, as much as I hate that saying that term. <laughs> Um, yep, it is pretty much all metal. So, let's start at the muzzle end, like usual. It's got an interesting kind of profile that definitely follows some of the older Browning designs, the old um, sort of Colt, uh, old Browning and Colt kind of designs uh, that Browning, of course, came up with. Definitely based on that, the, the kind of 32 calibre pocket guns, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember the dates exactly, I think it's the 1903 or something. But um definitely looks very similar in terms of the lines. Uh, it's very slim. The slide profile is very thin. And um, just like a 1911 or something, it has a barrel bushing. As you can see, it twists off just like it would on a 1911. won't come off now because the gun's all together. Um, but it's got a recoil plug, a barrel bushing, just like a 1911 would. As you can see, the outer barrel is a sort of a stainless effect metal. Uh, it's quite nice actually. A lot of people I know don't like WE's um, silver finish, but it's pretty much flawless. Um, and I think complements the gun quite nicely, just adds a little bit of contrast on it, even though I don't think the real Tokarev did have a uh, stainless barrel. Uh, it is threaded, like a lot of WEs are. As you can see in there, you can buy a little WE adapter and thread it in. I, I don't really like these because as soon as you put on a silencer, the adapter starts to unscrew and you get this annoying situation where you screw on the silencer and it unscrews the adapter, turn it the other way and you'll unscrew the silencer. You can never get it quite right because the threads are all different directions. So you tighten it up and it loosens the other one. But... um. That gives you the option there to add a threaded uh, barrel if you'd like. So that's always nice that it actually comes with that. You can see the brass in a barrel there, just a few mil from the front. It is a locked breech design, as you can probably see. The barrel, uh, the chamber drops a few, um, with probably less than a mil, really. Uh, and uh, the barrel doesn't tilt all that much, but uh, there is a very slight angle to it where it does indeed tilt. And it has got correct uh, locking lugs inside. As I mentioned earlier, the finish is pretty much flawless. Um, it might have picked up some marks, so I've just been sort of holding it. But uh, generally, it is an excellent looking finish. I'm not sure quite how they've done it. It definitely is much stronger than other WE finish uh, finished pistols. It's uh, not just paint. It must be either a thin powder coat or it could be anodized although it feels more like a powder coat maybe the front sight is interesting it's kind of loose it isn't held in by anything it is simply um, hooked in through the bottom and then the barrel holds it in place so as soon as you take the barrel out the front sight will fall through the gun uh, it's in there securely enough now because the barrel bushing pushes against it but um it is just loose in there and you might be able to hear does indeed have a little bit of rattle to it. Uh, it's also interesting is that it is very low. As you can see, compared to the rear sight, which is very high, um, it's about half the height it sort of should be, which means the sights don't really line up. Um, whereas the gun should be sort of straight like that. As you can see, the front sight is invisible. And um, you have to angle the gun up quite a bit to actually get the sights lined up. So you end up kind of aiming a little bit like that. It's not hugely noticeable, but it definitely shoots higher than your point of aim. Because uh, you're kind of having to hold the gun up quite high to get the sights aligned properly. I did actually cut out some uh, metal sheet and make a new front sight. It didn't look quite right, so I left it. it. This lower one does look right, but functionally it's a bit strange. I'm not sure if the real one is like that. I think it is actually from pictures I've seen. Maybe the reason is because the um, 762 by 25 Tokarev cartridge is very uh, kind of flat shooting, quite a long range cartridge. Maybe they were hoping to get some really long range shots, so they angled the sights and you could kind of lob them. 
you could probably reach a few hundred meters quite easily um, angling this pistol up um, since the cartridge is very high velocity but I don't know it's, it's, it's a little bit annoying how it doesn't quite line up and you will if I was shooting at a paper target here the shots would indeed hit a few centimeters above not a huge deal um, and it's possibly realistic but a little bit annoying uh, but could replace it if you cut out your own front sight since it's so easily replaceable anyway moving back so you can see it's very plain um, this isn't uh, yeah, this isn't an issue because the real one is indeed plain not a whole lot going on um, it might look better um, once it's used a bit and it's picked up some sort of wear marks it doesn't <laughs> not the kind of gun that looks very good just kind of blank but at least the finish is quite nice as you can tell on this surface it is perfectly even and flat and shiny really nice finish on the other side you've got your chamber of course um, it is a silver chamber there not a huge amount to say there <laughs> it's just about your average size with um, ejection port no markings on the barrel I suppose it wouldn't have really needed it. All the Russian guns back then were kind of chambered in the same ammunition. They're all 7.62 by something, something, something. They're all 7.62 calibre, so as long as you had pistol rounds, they would fit in this. You've got a slim little ejector here. Or extractor, sorry. The ejector would be in here somewhere. And it is a different finish um, to the rest of the gun. And it is a separate piece unlike a TM that's moulded in, that is a separate piece that's been put in there and I assume pinned in with this pin here. All the pins are actually real, they are actually sort of screwed in, or at least they look it, they are a separate piece of metal which is very nice. The attention to detail on this is excellent. I think if TM made this, all of these would be moulded in, um, and that's something that WE have actually do very well, um, recently anyway, their newer guns, really good detail. As I said, it's got a slightly different finish, and this can also be found on the um, magazine release, and it was on the other side of the magazine release there. Um, it's kind of a rough, cast, quickly painted black kind of finish that doesn't quite match the rest of the gun. It's a little bit cheap looking, which is why um, on the other side here, where it's quite noticeable, I um, polished it down and blued it up myself with some uh, Birchwood KC gun blue stuff. So that looks quite nice now. Something else that I um, coloured myself was these two pins here. Now these came out of the box as silver parts. Um, I don't mind silver on the barrel. I think that looks quite nice for contrast. But to be honest, these pins just look a bit silly. They look like they've just been sort of added on. It didn't look right, those being a stainless. So I just plucked them out and dipped it in Birchwood KC Aluminium Black and eventually they did go black. Interesting little mechanism we've got here. Um, if you're used to a 1911, uh, it's a slightly different process to remove it, but it's essentially the same piece. Your slide catch does indeed act as your kind of takedown pin. Rather than being held in by a detent pin over here, which kind of, you have a plunger set on a 1911 that holds it in place. Over here, it's really simple. Um, the whole idea of this gun is simplicity. And to disassemble, you pull against this piece of spring, springy um, metal. That allows the slide stop to simply fall out. You don't have to move the slide at all. You just push from that side, it comes out as it is. There it is. You can see how the rest of it is still silver. 